Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Thank you. So I'm just waiting a minute or two. And by that time, we'll have, let's say, 20 more people and we can start. So how are you feeling? We are almost there to finish the course, most difficult course, most, you know, terrific, most, you know, uh, confusing course or, you know, various uh, uh, various you know different words were used by different students confusing stressful it's like i mean i don't know the kind of words were used during all this 503 and 520 and uh, so i hope you know you are just going out of this uh, course very soon one more week after this and everything will be done so 520 this is you know next module we are going to have is more uh, from you know that is not from the book and that is out of the book so i will cover that and which is also very simple this is very simple also so <coughs> you can feel relaxed now and I'm not giving, <laughs> yeah, much easier than 503 because, you know, 503 is the beginning of the uh, number crunching from long break. <laughs> so no worry about the final. Final is only 25% weight. Uh, so you don't need to worry. I, you are all, almost getting 75%. Uh, so even if you if you get, you know, I mean, in worst case scenario, if 50% is correct, then you are ending up getting good grades. Don't feel pressure because, you know, this is not a pressure. You know, the content is that, that, but yeah, we have to take, you know, some challenges. And in the life, I, I, I realize that, you know, many of his students uh, believe that every problem is ready made in i mean i'm teaching this mba course in mba course problems are not ready made problems are created or you know environment creates the problem and you are the manager you are the decision maker to craft the problem in in easier way to solve so basically you know most of the problems they are not you will never get that you have this uh, standard deviation this mean or this 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 and you just solve the can you please mute your microphone and just solve the uh, problem so in in managerial decision no this is not the situation problems are very robust very complex very difficult very nonlinear and very very you know uh, uh, unpredictable and you are manager to think about different aspect to uh, craft the problem and then find the solution for that 
yeah you will you will get the similar like you know in 503 you will get 10 questions and that will be open by sunday so wait for a couple of more days and you will be all right now i have how many people in the class 31 okay so good evening to all of you today we are going to learn quality management and since you know i uh, you people are working in, in different industries, different sectors. Some of you are in manufacturing, some of you are in services. So quality was started, quality management, uh, management was started keeping the industrial revolution in real manu manufacturing or industrial world. But nowadays it is used in almost every field. If you think about the healthcare quality, if you think about the service quality, if you think about aviation quality, I mean, call center quality. So quality is not limited with manufacturing, but it is equally important for service sector also. So quality management, I mean, this chapter is about, you know, 50% theoretical aspect, 50%, you know, little bit numerical. So I'm just going little bit about, you know, here manufacturing and services. So basically, what is quality and quality can be defined as a physical metric, aesthetics attribute, functional characteristics, personal attribute, and efficiency attributes. So basically many attributes are there of quality. If you look into the Parsuraman, there is a professor whose name is Parsuna, Parsuraman. I remember the last name, who is basically from India. And he developed e-service or, you know, survey cool means service quality framework where he, he uh, where, you know, a lot of uh, dimensions are there, reliability, you know, um, aesthetics and other things. So it is also in manufacturing and services. So productivity process and quality. These are very important aspect and you must be knowing since you are working everywhere that, you know, productivity must be there, you know, due to some problem because of quality, the productivity cannot be achieved. Process must be streamlined and is smooth and quality must be up to the standard. So let's take a one simple example in our life. Uh, Apple Apple has a standard that, you know, the iPhone 12 should be 111 grams, 111 grams. In case, you know, the manufacturing is producing the company or, you know, the, uh, com you know, which is uh, assembly line is producing um, iPhone, which is waiting let's say 113 gram or 109 gram and it is not then certainly there's a problem and concern for, you know, you can think how about two grams extra or lower, you know, both two grams plus minus is a big concern for Apple and Apple products. Reason? Because it is not confronting with the standard. So similarly, every standard, you know, you can look into the iPhone, like 10 different iPhones. They are exactly same you know, there's no bigger size, lower size, smaller size, bait, thickness, all are standard. You know, they are very specified with the all the standards given. You don't see one piece is different, another piece is different. So this is the, you know, importance of quality. And, you know, similarly in service quality, if call center, you know, how they can, you know, the uh, service quality of the call center and many, many such kind of situations where you can use this. So what is the most important thing is reduction of the variation. So I'm not going much into this, you know, uh, you know, these cause and effect and you can read because you are better than uh, anyone in terms of reading. And uh, so I should directly get into the quality part. Manage, you know, role of management. Management is expected to find ways to maintain process, control in the short run and reduce variation in long run. So this is the aspect of, you know, if suppose iPhone is, you know, having two grams plus minus, then what is the purpose of management? They can observe, they can detect and they, their role is to, you know, just prevent this variation. Otherwise this variation from two gram to can go up to like 10 grams and the 
there will be demand which cannot be fulfilled. So role of a statistician, they measure the variation, set attainable limits of variation means they decide which are the upper limit, which is the lower limit within what limit the variation should be and establish rules to decide whether process is control or not. So basically these are the three aspect any statistician has to keep in mind. So a statistician have made many contribution in quality management and play active role in quality consultants. So American, uh, there is a, uh, you know, American statistical quality control, uh, American quality organization, something that is the forum, which is the highest in there. So there is a few points which I would like to raise here. The brief history of quality control. So basically in 1920, just after World War II, uh, no, this is World War II, World War I. And yeah, 1922, just after World War II, Seward, you know, he is the person, he started process control charts and Dodge and Ro roaming accepted sampling from lots. So basically these are the two people, those who started this quality journey. 50 to 60, Deming and Juran, these are the great people and you know they are considered father of the quality, trained Japanese manufacturer to become high quality producers by applying yeah, American quality control techniques. This is the, and if you get Six Sigma from here, any certificate from this organization, you can write your own check. So, and I, I got, you know, Six Sigma, not black belt, but I'm green belt of Six Sigma. So here, Taguchi and Ishikawa, these are two Japanese statistician, also trained Japanese manufacturer. So these are the people, those who contribute a lot during 50 and 60, because that time industrial revolution and all. 70, North American firms had lost their initial leadership in quality and Jap Japanese uh, organization took over. And it is Juran, Deming, Juran, Armand. And, you know, they come up with new lean production methods, quality improvement and lean production. And based on that, you know, they have lean Six Sigma, Japanese push quality frontier, you know, Kaizen philosophy came, then ISO standards came, and a lot of other things are there as of now, you know, based on that. So you can understand that ISO 901, I mean, they have all series. So these are all different standard. Uh, this is uh, Deming, his work, and you, you can just, you know, read. These are the 40 point, 14 points that Deming, you know, suggested really, uh, you know, about quality. So here now we come to the uh, measuring the quality using statistics using our mini tab. Uh, statistical quality control refers to subset of quality improvement techniques that based on the statistics and, you know, for example, descriptive tools, Pareto diagram, I think in 503 we studied in chapter number four, a scattered plot we studied in chapter number three, 503, box plot we studied in chapter number four and 503, this one diagram I'm going to check see that you normally know. And here we have analytical methods, control charts we are going to look lot and batch inspection plan that we look into this, you know, uh, sampling we have, uh, you know, one sample test, uh, uh, one sample hypothesis there, you know, you have the benchmark like 111 gram of uh, uh, iPhone weight and you are taking a sample of 10 iPhone uh, iPhone weight and you are checking the, with the standard whether they are deviating, whether they are higher or lower, means that that is what you have already seen in uh, uh, this hypothesis testing, one sample in five experimental de design, Taguchi robust design. So we are going to look, look some of them. Here, few examples are there of the quality that payroll department in large hospitals, number of weekly creditor telephone complaints, 
here percent of employee with insufficient tax withheld each year, each year percent of employee paid incorrectly or late each month these are the quality problem in the you know payroll department in a hospital aluminum uh, aluminum beverage container manufacturing plant you know uh, so monthly hours or down, uh, downtime due to delayed shipment thickness and weight of alloy or number of structured defective cans per thousand so basically you know retail pharmacy percent of prescription filled within 15 minutes or it is taking time so you can see different area or different you know they have different problems so number first thing is pareto chart what is the pareto chart which is also called 80 20 rules which is also called pareto chart and it is combination of two chart one chart is the bar chart and the second is ojai so look into this i'm just going to so for example this is just simply i just you know uh, frequency i you know traffic is this child care i mean why people get late at office traffic receive child care public transport weather overslept emergency could be anything so what i do under statistics we have control charts and we have quality tools so these are the two options in this chapter we are going to refer under quality tools we have pareto chart so look into i'm just going to you know attributes these are frequency in c2 and i don't need to do anything you can see this is the pareto chart and it explains that 80 percent if you you know 80 percent of performance can be improved if you fix 20 percent of the issues means any if you fix if you if you fix uh, yeah if you fix 20 percent of problem of any system or anything your performance will improve 80 percent and that you can also apply any anywhere in your life also so this is what about Pareto chart. A scatter plot can give you, you know, quite indication where, you know, which are the observations going out of the, you know, uh, which are unusual, which are not, you know. So you can clearly understand if that is happening and you can see the pattern is not clear, then you can see. You can understand machine speed. Here in box plot, which we have, you know, seen in, in previous class, you can see clearly how the box plot and how you can see these are the outliers you know you know outside this and you can see where it is skewed how this is behaving so basically you can get fair idea using this and there are actually seven quality tools in uh, in management in seven quality tools uh, uh, I'm just using Wikipedia for you. So seven basic quality tools. And these are cause and effect diagram. I'm coming over there. You know, this is like assembly checklist. Uh, this is run chart. You know, this is control chart. We are going to look into this histogram. We already learned in 503 what is the importance of histogram. Pareto chart and scatter plot. And this is flow diagram, flow chart, you know. So these are the seven quality chart and, you know, every quality person has to know about what are these. Some of them we learn in our past classes uh, and some of, you know, two we are going to learn today. And flow diagram, you know about, you know, how it works, how process works and how, you know, goes from step to step. So. So check seed FISBON. Now I'm going directly on the FISBON diagram. So FISBON is, what is FISBON? It is also called it Isikawa diagram, FISBON diagram or cause and effect. So these are the causes, material, method, people, management, measurement, technology. These are the causes. What is the effect? Effect is excessive length of stay. So how do we do in mini tab? So if you look into my mini tab and I have this. So what I did in this, I just looked here, you know, I just 
put man management material technology all you know i've listed all the reasons under material management methods and now i go under statistics under statistics and here we have quality tools and we have cause and effect diagram here you can see and you can see in column one you can see material i'm just going you know i'm just not looking into this thing and i'm just i have to be careful when you know you can just what is the effect excessive length of stay title i can say cause and effect of excessive length of stay and okay based on this and now you can see this is my cause and effect diagram so basically minitab is very helpful in order to make your cause and effect diagram in simpler manner means you have to put you know the causes and uh, you know you can get this so this is another thing you can understand related to person material management technology machine environment you can understand what are the causes and what are what is the effect so how you can how you can work on cause to improve the effect or minimize the you know losses so this is one thing which is called fishbone diagram cause and effect and isikawa because isikawa developed this uh, this you know fishbone diagram so so there are you know many organizations have quality improvement programs and other things tqm means quality in everything that means for example if you look into the tqm of uh, education system or university that means you know tqm in education how we can have better education that means you are going to apply not only teacher education i mean quality teacher quality pedagogy quality content quality uh, delivery method quality you know channels of delivery but also all associated you know quality uh, like say uh, administration quality registration department quality uh, control related to services quality you know uh, payment methods you know whatever problems that you might face in related to payments means end to end total quality not only you know we are just targeting the quality total quality improvements in education in eastern washington does it means you have to go not only for only instructor and students you know it also counts the quality of the students filtering the students using gmat or any other thing so basically or before getting into there should be some exam so quality management is total quality is not only one thing it has to be entire system quality improvement so that requires that all business activities should be oriented towards meeting and exceeding customer needs empowering people employees eliminating wastage of the or rework and ensuring long run viability of the enterprise through continuous quality improvement and quality is not one time affair it is continuous process business process redesign if you know if you see there any problem it can be completely redesigned the process so i mean lot happened from my you know lecture now let's go about so this these are the you know different thing about you can just go about now we come to the control charts and this is you know our homework or uh, mini tab work or fill in the blank is based on that so what is control chart the control chart is visual display that plots the value of a sample statistics over time through repeated observations random sampling is often needed to reduce cost or time let's say you know they you know they want to check the iphone production is really working you know it is under quality 
new outsourcer has been assigned by Apple to manufacture the iPhone. And you know, in India recently, there was a problem. What happened? Okay, then how, you know, every assembly line or every, you know, um, quality inspector goes, picks 10 random, each time he picks 10 random iPhone. And based on that, he checks the, whether quality is in control or quality is not in control. So you can have two types of data where you can have attribute data. And now we have three types of chart, which is control X bar chart where, you know, sample means R chart is range, sample range. P chart is proportion or defective. So these are the three common charts we use here. X chart. Now I'm just going directly here and I have worksheet or data right here. I mean, this is the example I have given to you for fill in the blanks. So here we have how many samples? You know, one, two, three, four, five, six samples. And the mean is this and this, you know, sample. So, oh, sorry, you know, these are six observations, X1, X2. So these are the six. And, you know, in each 14 observations are there. And now I go under, we, you know, it's better to go under control chart, look into that. In control chart, we have all the data type. If it is continuous, okay, go here. If it's an attribute like proportion or defect, per you know then go here what you are counting defects p chart defects per unit go u chart if it is continuous you know individual and moving range no data collected in subgroups no then if data collected in subgroups we have here subgroups yes subgroup size if less than eight we have how many six yeah, one, two, six, then X bar R chart. If subgroup size is greater than X bar S chart. So I'm just going here. Data are multiple columns. I can just go, I mean, you have the options if data is in one column or data is multiple columns. So we have data in multiple columns. Now, how will you de determine the control limits or estimate from the data means from this data automatically this software or do you want to do for your own you want to do your own limits or you know you want to decide your own limit. So both options if you know in question the limits are given you can feed here if not given okay let data do the job. And now you can see. This is this is mean. So XR chart X means um, mean and range R means range and this is these are the two charts we are looking now look into that. Are we really interested to see? Here you can see this is mean. The average is 11 point something upper control limit is this 12 point something lower control limit do you see the process in control process i i would say this is in control because you can see this is now you can also observe you know here you can see one line is you know two are here then two are here then and then it is going the you know range maybe after this it can be out of control now look into the range. Range is still, you know, with this sample, with this data, this mean and range both are in control. So, and you can say the process is in control and, you know, you can see the stability here. You know, you can also see the, the process mean and variation are stable. No subgroups are out of the control or either chart. Here you can read and understand what is the meaning of this. So lower control limit, upper control limit, upper, you know, this is range me. So these are the three important parameters that, you know, in slide you can see, they are just calculated. I mean, this is a upper control limit, lower three sigma, you know, what is three sigma? And three plus three, which is six sigma, that is the limit, you know, within six sigma limit, it has to be 
means 99.73 percent so this is the therefore upper control limit is three sigma plus minus three sigma and if you remember the normal distribution how it is uh, so this is the mu and sigma so again same thing you know you can look into this you can see this this these are very important things for your decision point of view there are four rules are there look into the rule one you know when you see draw the uh, uh, charts x bar chart you need to see single point outside three sigma look into this so i'm just going to see this is my uh, x bar chart so this is three sigma here and three sigma here you can see these two lines lower control and upper control they are plus minus three sigma line single chart a single point outside three sigma no we don't have now second thing two of three uh, successive points outside two sigma or same side of central line look into this so yeah so rule number two is going to because it is two of the line or two of the points are same side of the uh, line so this is the line and when you see you know two sigma and three sigma you can draw the line you can simply calculate with two sigma and you can see where is the two sigma so two lines are going uh, on either direction here we can see three lines three points two points two points so this rule number two is so rule two two or three successive points outside two sigma on same side of central line so this is Rule number three, four or five successive point outside one sigma on the same side of central line. So you can calculate the one sigma based on the similar you know, calculation that we have here. So for example, this is three sigma case. Now you can do the two sigma and one sigma. Now, so four or five, we don't see four or five you know, out of sight. Nine successive point on the same side of the central line. So that is also not observed in our case. But what is the interpretation of these rules? If suppose, let me start with rule number four. If nine points are successive on one side, you know, for example, this, let's say this, this is the graph. Here you can see nine points are on the, you know, one side of entirely one side of, you know, then what is means here that your process is shifting towards one side that means it can cause a severe problem in the process or production or services because it is you know it is not like if process is doing up and you know like you know sinusoidal wave kind of thing that means it is going up down up down that means okay it is still following the central line but here all nine points are coming this side that means nine successive on you know that is not good sign here you know many three or four or five on one side that is also not good indicator here two or three successive point outside two so here you can see i'm just going to so this is th this is basically these are three sigma line but here for example this and this these are two sigma line this is and this is one sigma line or any chart that you can clearly understand because you have studied the normal distribution and you know what is what i'm talking about so this becomes very important to understand and you know based on that you can make decision histogram Again, you know, based on this, you can, you know, this is again three sigma, two sigma, and you can see how. So basically, based on this, the histogram has been plotted. So six sigma, one sigma, two sigma, three sigma, you know, 68%, 95.44, and 99.73%. So control chart for range, we just, you know, we can draw directly from here. And Control charts for P means proportion, X divided by N. So for example, you know, uh, let's say I, I think I gave this example. 
no. I think this is the processor example I gave you. For example, this is the uh, data we have. So I go under this uh, with So this is a case of prop, you know, clearly given over there, you know, absent and subgroup. No, mm -hmm. I think I need to go again here. Uh, let's try control charts and we have P chart. So this is absent, subgroup size is 50, that is given in the question. And now you can see the, uh, the chart that is right here. So lower control limit is zero. This is, you know, P proportion, upper control limit is this. This one item, which is, you know, going out of the, out of the six sigma, this is, which is indicating red. So the one point is more than three standard deviation from central line. So test failed at 0.7. So basically, you know, seven point, which is a, I think a professor that on seventh occasion that, hey, you know, this has failed means absent of the class students, uh, I think I don't remember the exact question. So absent uh, are observed each time 15 times. So, you know, seventh, this is failed here. I think this is going out of the control. So X, uh, so basically, you know, you can see the P chart You can see also these things, blocks plot. Now, abnormal patterns that you can see in this cyclic, which means, you know, one time it is going up, one time is going down on the central line towards, you know, along the central line means sinusoidal kind of wave, uh, follow cyclic pattern. Oscillation sample tend to alternate high, low, high, low, means it is going high, low, high, low. And that is oscill oscillation. Instability sample vary more than expected. Level shift, sample shift abruptly either above or below central line that we have seen nine point, you know, trend sample drift slowly either upward or downward and mix. So these are the different, you know, two different, you know, so these are the abnormal patterns you can see now, another important thing is CP and CP max. So process capability. Uh, so this is CP uh, is a ratio comparing the interval between the specific limits within the expected process range, which is six sigma. And the formula is you see upper, you know, this and lower divided by Six Sigma. So higher CP index is always better and indicate more capable process. So it indicates the capability of the process. How capable is this? If process range is small related to a specific range, capability index will be high. So CP1 indicates that process is just really capable of staying within the. So how we can calculate using this formula? And I think one or two questions I have given over are given to you in look into that lower so no safety margin because your process is within this range so look into this if here you you can see if your process is within this this is the limit you know so this is your safety margin you can have this margin for example this you have this margin on either side you have so if this is within this, you don't have safety margin, means you are running very tight, means any small error or any problem in the process will disturb your manufacturing, will disturb your quality of the product. 
but if you are you know cp is like this or cp is like this you have still margin so cp index cpk index this is another thing which is you know another process capability which looks at each separate and here you can see this is the formula hey raj yeah i have a question about cp yeah um so if you could go back uh in the homework you've got you know the first question with lsl at 500 upper at 518 um so if i get if i get an answer of three right after i put it through the cp um equation mm -hmm. how do i how do i how do i interpret that as not having any safety margin look into that you know for example okay uh, i'm going to go on the board so so the question is let me check the question first what is the question exactly asking so so let me Are you still there? Yeah, you. Oh, okay. Which question you are talking about? I posted it in the chat. Okay. It is 500 and, okay. Yeah, so the question is number four or five. I don't know if the number of the question matters. It's just I, I yeah. was able to post it into the chat. OK, so using lower limit is 500, upper limit is 518, mu is 500, and sigma is 3. Then think about what is the safety margin here. For example, I just go and you can simply 500 518 minus 500 that's you know that depends upon 18 3 into 6 oh, just too much 6 into sigma so what is the sigma in this case? It's three. So what do you get here? Six into three. So I get I get the answer of one. One. And look into now slides. So where is look into this? So CP is one. Your slides are not showing. Oh, yeah. oh, it is not showing. Can you see this? Yes. What do you see one means? Okay, so then I, I refer back to this chart. If, if, I, if my CP is one, then it's no safety margin. The reason is that your process variation starts from, you know, upper, limit and it is going up to lower limit so basically any little bit you know so basically you know let me go here if it is little bit you know it is going to be out of the limit means you don't have any margin of error means any little bit problem in this process will resulted result into the out of control process okay so, so we so want so then my ne my next question is is that I got one for the for the next problem that was similar mm -hmm. and yet the answer was not was not no margin. 
uh, which question is? I've posted it in the chat. Okay. It's a 50 and 56. Yes. And Sigma is the safety margin for product specification would be? So here is 56. Oh, I also got one. I also got one for this answer as well. And what is the answer? Answer is? And the, and the correct answer was three on each side. Let me read the wording. Probably, okay. probably the you know issue is the wording. So give Perhaps. me a, give me a minute because okay. what is the question exactly asking? Sometimes it's the wording issue. So just a minute. So where this is? I'm just looking into this. So in this in this question, the answer is not one; it's two. Uh, no. Is that because I'm dividing it by six times point five? Six times point five means is okay. three. Is three. So you divide six by three, you get two. So you're right. So the answer is not one, it's two. So the question, I'm just going to look into the setting. So question is wrong or what is the issue? No, everything's fine. Okay, everything is fine. Basically multiplying. Well, so my question my question is, if the answer is two, then why is, why is the correct answer on the homework three on each side? Well, so you calculate, right? So the distance between upper limit and, and the lower limit is six. So right? the, the six sigma range is three. So the, the safety margin is the distance between the end of three sigma and the next uh, limit, upper limit and lower limit. Right? And so, you, so you subtract one from the other and divide it by half, right? Can you see this? Yes, I can. And you can see the safety margin? Yes, I can. So, so CP is two. Okay. That, okay, I got gotcha. you. All right, cool. Thank you. So, which is right here in the, you know. So, basically, yeah, what I was talking, I just forgot. Anyway, uh, let me go back what I was talking. Yeah, the CP index, this is another one. And you know, this is minimum of mu minus lower and upper divided by three. And you know, you can see process variation versus specification limits. So uh, Kat, I don't remember exactly, you know, what is there or what is not there because a lot of, uh, it is keeping in memory is difficult. So I think that is not there. Basically, I ask very simple 10 questions. So this is basically about, you know, uh, uh, control limit. Uh, sorry, uh, different uh, charts and quality control. We don't have any hardcore statistics here. Uh, some of the part is uh, related to some of the you know par related to this now i would like to talk about what is lean six sigma oh so basically lean you know lean means this is basically taken and now you know lean production system lean processes lean six sigma what is this meaning lean means lean means no extra burden, no extra bit wastage, you know, and that is what is used in Six Sigma. That means no extra, and the Six Sigma goal is 3.4 defects per million. And who are following these things? I think, you know, there are some examples like uh, aviation industry, they take off and land almost million of flight, and rarely, you know, this happens, you know, one once in a million, once in a couple of millions, you know, the flight goes out of the runway or have any accident. So the aviation industry is really following the 
six sigma six sigma principle was given or you know the philosophy was given by motorola and then i think everyone using it the second thing is like if if you know like you know ups and fedex they are shipping how many how many uh, parcel every day if i say 10 100000 every every day they are shipping for example 10 100000 means this is 1 million means they can afford only 3 point parcel or close to 3 or 4 parcels that not reach to the destination they you know three or four parcels may misplaced or may not reach on time or this thing so these are you know the logistics industry particularly all this big companies fedex and this they are also following six sigma similarly six sigma is also you know g many organizations they have six sigma philosophy for their quality and it is based on this five define measure analyze you know uh, so these are five steps of process improvement which is clearly and you know iso and malcolm beverage award this is also another thing so so this is about quality chapters or on chapter number you know 17 and some of you have a problem that you know it is by mistake that is a error chapter 14 is posted in one place in the you know in the canvas so i correct it so this is basically about process and control charts now you have question please let me know If don't have question, then we can see next. Probably we will meet next week on Sunday because uh, on Sunday evening we can talk about the next, and we will not have much time because next Sunday every you know following Sunday everything will be end. So instead of Wednesday, probably we will have on Sunday evening, and the assignment everything will open on Sunday evening, a uh, Sunday morning. Sorry, means. Saturday midnight. So I am going to send the complete email to every one of you. Yeah, Sunday is March 14th. If that is March 14, yeah. Yeah, the coming Sunday we will have for next final, you know, lecture, which is about AHP, analytical hierarchy process, and you know, project management techniques, which is earned value analysis that can help you to uh, understand whether your project is going on time, whether it is under budget, under time. Is there homework for module six? It will be open on Sunday. Yeah, it will be updated. It will be updated, don't worry. So it will be updated before Sunday morning. It, it is worth of 100 points. Okay. If no question, then I would like to say have a good night. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Most welcome. Mm. Mm.